Welcome back to part two of building a guinea pig pen. As you see, this is part one that's playing over the top. Now, if you want to see that part, I will stick a link down below and I'll put a link at the top of this video. Uh, in this video, I show you basically the finishing process, which is the painting, putting the mesh on the screen and just finishing it up. So sit back, enjoy and have some fun. So now I start cutting the legs for the stand and these were 50 centimeters long just to make the total height of what the customer wanted. And then I assembled these roughly inside of the guinea pig pen. This helped me to make sure that I had them the right size. What it did do was it meant that there was a bit of an overhang from the pen to the stands and this was fine, it was only uh, an inch on each side, so I just used one of the offcuts from the front of the pen to then give me the right lengths for the outside. So this is a little bit of a better look on how the stand is going to fit together. As you can see, it fits nicely on the inside of the pen. Everything's pretty flush and these are the way that it's going to be screwed together on the underneath of the stand. I'm going to use two types of screws to screw these together. The first type is these riser cutters and these have a like drill bit point on the end of them and this helps to stop the splitting of the wood, it helps drive it in a lot quicker and you don't really need to mess about getting a pilot hole. And then on the other side, on the countersink, you've got these little notches and they help to countersink the screw into the wood itself. The second type I am using are these Turbo Gold threaded screws. These are very similar. Um, they also have the drill bit point on the end and the countersink notches to help countersink itself too. Um, I'm not, I could have used these longer ones all the way through but they're 150 mil long and it, there's just no need to put those in on all four sides. Uh, the riser cutters, they will fit nicely on the shorter sides and the turbo golds need to be on the longer sides. After knocking off all the sides with a bit of sandpaper, I came back and I just glued and screwed these together. Again, I'm using my Type 1 2 glue and I'm just screwing these nice and tight uh, enough so that there's a bit of glue squeeze out and then once that glue dries it's just going to be absolutely solid. Unfortunately my camera ran out of battery just as I was getting this finished and I came back to after I put the wheels on check the camera and realized that the battery had gone flat. I just used standard gold wood screws to hold these in. I did pilot and screw these in because they don't have that tip to stop the wood splitting and these are fairly close to the edge, but they'll be fine with the pilot in there. They're not gonna take a whole lot of weight. These are actually rated for 25 kilos per wheel. So what I'm going to do now is, now these are all screwed together, I'm going to flip the whole thing over, I'm going to put it near those tables at the back, and then I'm going to gently slide on the pen over to the top. I'm going to mark off all the sides and make sure they're all flush, and then I'm going to screw down from the top. I don't need to glue this together because I might need to take it apart when I get to the property, just in case it doesn't fit through the doorways. With the camera battery being so low, I, I missed out the step of just sliding it over and screwing it down. I didn't think that needed any kind of documentation really. And then while it was charging, I additionally went ahead and I masked up two inches from the bottom because this is where I'm going to be putting the paint on. The paint I'm using is Leyland Trade floor paint. This is heavy duty floor paint. This is designed for like workshop floors and things like that. It's resistant to chemicals and it will be great for any kind of leaks or spills that will happen on the bottom of the pen. And once it dries, it dries absolutely solid and it'll just be ideal. I had some of this left over from another project, so I thought I might as well use it for this one. So let's go ahead and get the painting done.
Okay, now it's all painted, that's the first coat. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna peel the masking tape off now. I'm going to let this dry overnight. I'm gonna come back tomorrow morning and I'm gonna remask it and do another coat of paint. You always wanna try and take the masking tape off when it's still slightly wet. That way when the paint dries, if it dries onto the masking tape, you'll end up peeling the paint off with the masking tape. So always try and do it while it's a little bit wet and then just peel it nice and slowly and you'll get some nice clean crisp lines. And here it is 48 hours later after I have done the second coat of paint and allowed that to dry fully. It looks brilliant. Uh, I'm sorry that the lighting on the camera is going a bit weird. It does that when the workshop doors open because the sunlight and the light inside the workshop are slightly different and the camera decides it doesn't like the white balance. So it's nice and dry and nice and tough. So we'll get on to the next step, which is putting the mesh across the front. Okay, so this mesh is a bit of a pain to handle and it just tries to roll up all of the time. But uh, when you weight it down, it's not too bad and you can hold it down. If you've got two people, always use two people because one can hold one side while the other one is cutting. And to cut it, I am using these side snips. Uh, I was going to get some long tin snips, but I was told if I use tin snips, well, I was reading the reviews and the reviews on the tin snips said they were really bad for wire and they just broke very easily. So this has done the first pen and these have been perfectly fine and they worked all right for this pen. It just takes a little bit of time. Uh, it would have been a lot better if there was a spring in the middle there uh, just to help open and close it because that does ache your hands opening and closing it all the time. But we'll roll it out, we'll measure it up and I'm gonna put a couple of weights on there and we'll get it all cut to size and I'll show you putting it onto the pen. So to weigh it down on one side, I used my tool bag and that worked wonders and then I just hung the other side off the end. When I measure this, I measure it to the length that I need and then I just cut one snip into that square and then I can just run up that square all the way up. As you can see, it takes a little while just to get up there and when I got around a third of the way up, I noticed that this other end was springing up and, and before I get to the end, this was going to pop up and try and get me. So uh, yeah, I put another weight on that side just to stop it springing back because they can be quite sharp once they've started to get cut. I then measured the height and I did the same. I weighed down close to where I need to cut and then I cut all the way along the other side. Um, I don't really think you need to watch me just trimming down all these because it does take a long time. So I did try and show you this just sat against the frame just so you could see how close it was to it. But as you can see, it does roll up all the time. Uh, once this is pinned in place, then it'll hold nice and strong. To pin it in place, I am using these Tackwise pins. These are just 15 mil staples and these work really well in my Ferex nail gun. This nail gun can do brad nails and staples and it's from Aldi. Uh, I actually got this second hand from a dealer that sells the X display Aldi products. So I got it even cheaper than it would be at Aldi. I didn't get the three year warranty that you would get at Aldi, but I've had this for 18 months now and it's been absolutely brilliant. So I'm going to now get this lined up and I'm going to pin it into place and I'll try and get a couple of shots for you to do that. Just to help me hold this in place, uh, as I did before, I used a quick grip clamp and this just held it into place on the other side to stop it all springing back while I was pinning it in. I just made sure it was all still lined up and I didn't have it pulled too far away. And then I put a couple of pins in the right hand side and that held it in place really well while I was doing the rest of it. Once you get to the last little bit, just make sure you can push this corner in as close as you can to the corner and then you can run your snips all the way down there and you can make sure that it fits nice and flush against that back wall ready to be pinned in. As you can see, I bent it a little bit there just so I could tell where I need to cut. And this is what it looks like with the mesh on the front. As you can see, it's nice and sturdy on there. The last thing I need to do is build the shelf with a little ramp that goes across the back 
and then this project is finished and ready to go. I have marked 25 centimeters up from the bottom because this is halfway up. I have cut a couple of pieces of wood to act as a shelf bracket just for the shelf to sit on the top because it needs to be removed for cleaning purposes. And what I'm going to do is I'm just going to use mitre bond to glue this onto the surface. The mitre bond will be plenty strong for this. I'm using quite a good amount of mitre bond on there and that will just hold really well for this and it will just set really quickly. I did with the same with the back piece and then I cut the shelf to size and it fits nice and flush. What I need to do now is because the front of this shelf dips down I need to put a support in where the mesh is just to stop the front just dipping down and then I will pin this from the outside the same way I pin the mesh from the inside. I'm just going to use a pencil to mark across the mesh where I need to hold the piece of wood into place and then pin it in to act as the support for the front of this. Again this is going to have several pins just to hold it in place and it's not going to take a whole lot of weight anyway so it should be perfectly fine. Once I've marked where it needs to go I can take the shelf out just to give me a little bit better access and then I can hold the piece of wood onto the pencil line and stick one pin into place and that will hold it roughly in place while I can get the rest of the pins in there. To get the angle I need to cut for the ramp I use my bevel box and I hold it against the top because I can't quite get in to see because of the camera angle and I zero it against the top and then I just check what the angle is once it's on the bottom and this worked out to be 24.5 degrees. As you can see that fits absolutely perfectly on there, I just need to give it a little bit of a sand on the top once it's glued down. I'm not too worried about the bottom part because that's going to have sawdust covering it anyway and they can just walk up there. I do need to cut some grooves into that piece of wood just so that they've got something extra to grip onto and to do that I'm going to use my table saw sled and just set the blade just to take a tiny little bit of material off. I mark this at 5 centimeter increments all the way up the ramp and I just run this through just to take the teeth of the table saw through it so it's, it's probably one or two millimeters deep. And then I just need to give this a light sand and then it's ready to be glued onto the ramp. Again I used mitre bond to glue this to the ramp and then I needed to add this side piece just as a little bit of guidance for the guinea pigs to walk up there because they don't like walking up without a side rail they feel like they're going to fall off and what I'm going to do is I'm going to cut these at the same angle which is 22 and a half degrees and that's just going to make it look that little bit better and more pleasing to the eye. It would be perfectly fine like this if I cut the end off straight and glued it on but it just looks a bit more pleasing with the angle. After cutting that angle on the ramp I then took the whole shelf out and placed it onto my workbench just so I had that little bit of extra support to be gluing this down and again I'm using mitre bond on here just to glue that into place. It's not going to be under any kind of stress so it doesn't really matter and it'll just hold it nice and strong anyway. And there we go, it's all finished and I've got to say, uh, quite happy with how it turned out. The ramp turns out pretty good, looks really nice with those angles on there. A good big area for him to sit up there, there's a good area to hide underneath as well. And the shelf simply lifts right out and then sits back in, it's nice and solid. The wheels work really well as well, nice and easy to move around, even on my workshop floor which is just full of little divots everywhere and little holes, so it's brilliant, really happy with how it turned out. If you like this video, if you want to see more builds like this then please let me know down below and hit that like button. If you want to follow along for anything else, woodwork related, laser related and just hopefully we can learn and build stuff together then just hit that subscribe button and follow along so thanks for watching guys 
I'll see you in the next video.